It's DJ Double here, and today I am sat with FLIP to the tricks. Yes, bro, big up, man. Flip tricks in the building. What's good, bro? Respect. All good, man. All good. I say flip tricks in the building. I'm actually in your building today. For real high focus HQ. High focus HQ in Brighton. This is like, this is like the hub of UK hip hop. Yeah, for real. Amazing that it's in Brighton as well. Like mm. a town as a DJ that I would call my hometown. So amazing yeah, things, real. man. Yeah, definitely. So flip tricks, you're like. You're definitely an unsung hero of UK hip hop, I think. Mm. Everything you've done as a solo artist, um, obviously you're a quarter of the four owls, yeah. which are a staple group in the UK hip hop scene. Yeah. And not to mention a CEO mm. and what founder? Yeah, founder. Of High Focus Records. Yeah, for like sure. the most important record label I would say mm. in UK hip hop today. Respect, man. Like incredible, man. Do you feel like I don't. You don't really seem like the kind of guy to feel this way. But do you ever feel overlooked with all these accolades? And do you got ever feel like, come on, man, like, yeah, yeah. Do you know I what I've done? Yeah, yeah, for all. I mean, in certain respects, I do. Like, it previously before, like in terms of the radio stuff and that, I used to feel like that quite a bit more. Like getting acceptance from the sort of mm-hmm. mainstream radio, getting them spins on that. I felt underlooked in that sort of respect. But then also, like, we do loads of shows all around Europe, and like I was saying before, like been out to Australia and things like that. So like we sell quite a lot of units and we've got a dedicated fan base. So we connect with the fans a lot, you know what I mean? We get the good views on YouTube and that. So that's kind of like, that sort of balances it out as well. So yeah, the fans pay you back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for real. When was the first time you remember being aware of hip hop? Um, I think it was when I was like about 12 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, I heard Fuji's The Score. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. That album for me, what got me into hip hop, man. Like, that didn't leave my Walkman for quite a while. Yeah, Walkman as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah for How real. did you hear it? Was that like because of an older sibling or? Yeah, it was like my best mate at the time was his older brother. Right. Like, whatever music he was into, like it used to be like rock or whatever, and then he got into hip hop, so we got the hip hop tapes and that. Yeah. And then yeah, from then I was hooked. Then like, I heard of like Biggie, Big Pun, Big L, them kind of guys, and then yeah, I was locked. Nothing but hip hop, basically. Yeah, that's sick. Actually, it was my big sister that I heard the score from. I can yeah, definitely yeah. relate to that. As an artist, throughout your career, through all of the albums you've mm. done, you stayed very consistent in a in a way of you can hear that it's hip hop. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. that real like what I call real hip hop, what mm. other people might call underground hip hop. Yeah, like, for real. But that real authentic sound. Mm. Now, in the time you've been doing it. Hip hop's gone through, so, like I'm talking worldwide. Hip hop's gone yeah. through so many different kind of eras and different yeah. waves and sounds. Mm. Can you explain the mentality behind keeping your sound and really staying with mm. this kind of style, yeah. as opposed to being like, All right, you know what? Well, this is popular. Mm. If we just do this, we'll get on radio. We can yeah. get in the clubs. We can do this, and we can really like excel there. Mm. But it's not what you wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just like doing what you loved you know what I mean like that's that kind of hip-hop that kind of classic 90s golden era of rap is what got me into it and then obviously the kind of crew I was surrounded with you know like the guys in the four hours and that they were all super le- heavily into that kind of music as well yeah so like it's kind of from a passion from it and I guess that's kind of what separates us from people who jump from like style to style you know throughout that they, they lose the kind of consistency so it can kind of come in trends and waves, whereas, because we kind of stick to what we love and, you know, we build a like, passionate fan base behind that as well and they kind of know what they're getting as well. Yeah. Like consistency, do you know what I mean? Definitely, man. Um, so, yeah, kind of going for the consistent sort of vibe, I think. Yeah, I think it shows if you look at the scene as well because mm. if you look at those other more mainstream scenes, you get every year is a new hottest artist. Yeah, every yeah. year is a new artist emerging and mm. another one drops off. Whereas with this scene in particular, like... Mm we'll just call it the UK hip hop scene for yeah. argument's sake. There's like a staple group of people. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That every year mm. it's the same guys. One yeah, or two yeah. might come in, mm. but it's all like the same people. Yeah, yeah. You just know more and more content. So mm. I, I hear that definitely. Would you say that UK hip hop gets more love outside the country? Uh, in certain places, you know, like Aust- Austria, actually, there's like a lot of love in Austria, mm-hmm. um, Australia as well. You know, it's big out there. Um, but I think it is popular, you know, our kind of scene is centred quite south, you know, and kind of going up to sort of Manchester and Leeds more yeah, um, as well on the north side. But yeah, I think it is kind of concentrated around there mainly. 
a couple of years ago, like Grime obviously had what everybody called the Grime resurgence, mm. where Skepta made some wicked music yeah, and yeah. got into the mainstream. Mm. And Grime, on the most part, it kept its authentic sound right there. And yeah, a lot yeah. of artists were able to break through, some of them charting. Mm. And obviously even Stormzy's stellar career was yeah, born yeah. and stuff. Do you think UK hip hop would ever be able to do that to that extent? I mean, I like, would take Ocean Wisdom, for example, like he's signed to High Focus. Obviously for us, you know, his album was like top 40. Um, so that was like a big milestone for us as an independent label. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. think any independent UK hip hop label had an album. Major features on there as well. Yeah, in the top 40. So there's like, you know, collabs with Dizzy Rascal, Method Man. Obviously that helped, you know, project him to that sort of kind of level. Do you know what I mean? Getting there, obviously, we put Rag and Bowman on as well. He was signed to High Focus. Yeah. Um, oh, was he? I never realised yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We put out uh, two of Rag and Bowman's first uh, projects. Right, okay. Um, it was One was called Dog and Bone EP and the other one was Put That Soul On Me. Okay, yeah. How um, did I, I knew he rapped, but I never even knew he was signed Yeah, to no, rap, that so. was singing. Oh, he was yeah, singing yeah, in there yeah, as well, yeah. yeah. So basically, Leaf Dog, who's the producer in The Four mm. Hours, he kind of heard him, like really encouraged him like in his early days, like, got him in the studio, they made loads of tracks. So like, we put out a project with him. Um, then another artist called Dirty Dyke on the label, he produced a project um, for Rag and Bone. And um, yeah, and then we did quite a lot of shows with him and touring and that's, from that, he got picked up by, um, I think it was Warner mm -hmm. and Columbia. Um, and now look. And then now look, yeah, do you know what I mean? One of the biggest artists in the world. Yeah, 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 for real. Crazy. So like, yeah, obviously that's, he's, he's propelled mm -hmm. there, but we put out like his first stuff and still keeping good contact with him and that. Yeah. It's good to see that the path from high focus can mm. lead to that. It's not yeah, just definitely. like, right, you're here now, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut the, shut the door, lock yeah, the doors. <laughs> you ain't leaving. He's here. Yeah, that yeah. I started to see. Mm. How do you feel about US hip hop? Um, I mean, there's good stuff, you know what I mean? And there's bad stuff that, you know, I like quite a lot of people out there still, like Joey Badass is pretty good. And mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Guys like that kind of who represent you know, real hip hop as well. There's still people doing that out there. As real well. hip hop, that yeah, key yeah. phrase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about High Focus as mm. a label real quick before mm. we talk about the album. One thing I wanted to establish first, High Focus has got to the point that it is. Mm. And I'm, am I right in thinking like no major investors, no major label support? Yeah. It's literally just, it was your idea and now, and now look, we're here. Yeah, for real. Right. Yeah, no, no, no investors at all. And no, no support from any major people at all. Just hard work, grinding. Yeah, talk to me about yeah. the early days then. Like Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I started, I put out my first project called Force Fit Imagery. That was in 2007. That was before High Focus is even around. Um, then I was just literally hustling it on the streets, do you know what I mean? Going to clubs, trying to sell it to people. Going to places like Speaker's Corner okay, um, in right. Brixton. That was like, that was my training ground, didn't it? Right, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, so I did loads of open mics there. That's how I met a lot of people. I was also recording at a studio in Camberwell uh, with an artist called Jest. Mm -hmm. And um, in Chemo, it was his studio. And Jest had a label called YNR. Okay, yeah. And yeah. Um, he was like releasing his albums. He had been, he'd done like a feature verse for me. And um, yeah, basically got I got to the point of the album where I had like four videos, artwork, like all the bits that you kind of need to put out a record. Um, and like he was basically, I like I would put out your album, but I kind of have to wait for like over a year or more because he had like promised certain so other many projects. Other artists, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was like the best advice I could you know give to you would be to like do it yourself. So then I kind of that's when I come to Brighton and I uh, did this course called like Access to Music. So it was like a two year course, and then it was when I was there. That's when I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to start this label because I had no other way to release the the project. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. that's how High Focus started, just as a means me to release my own music amazing so then i found out you know how to like register to like ppl and prs yeah, all them yeah. companies that you gotta so what was the, where was the thought of you wanting to put it out as an actual album then and really yeah. release it because what you could have done is just soundcloud yeah, yeah there you go yeah. guys there's my mixtape like yeah i think you could have saved all the hassle i'm glad mm, you didn't yeah yeah but what was the mentality there it's because like i grew up listening to like um jess task force skinny man mm -hmm. kalashnikov all of them guys, so they're on uh, Low Life Records, which was like a massive UK hip hop label. Yeah. Before High Focus, that was like the you know the best, biggest sort of like UK label. They were my idols, all them dudes or whatever. So like around that point, Low Life had actually crumbled mm -hmm. and like it went under. So there were no real UK hip hop labels that were really doing like proper bits at that time. 
Um, so I guess that they were like the older generation and then we were just the new generation coming up, but there was no platform. So that's why, you know, that's how High Focus kind of came in. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, like, I'm quite an organised guy. Like, I like my business and that. So, like, being entrepreneurial, I just kind of fell into the role. Like, mm-hmm. I put out my album. That did well. Um, I had a mate called Jan Baxter who was, like, really talented lyricist around. And, you know, he was getting an album together. But then, you know, he was like, oh, would you be interested in putting it out? I came up with a deal, proposed it. He's like, yeah, that sounds sweet. You know, put that out. And then I just carried on meeting people and making friends with, like, talented artists. And it just kind of grew from there, basically. The roster grew and grew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's looking strong, man. Mm. There's no girls on there. Nah, bro, I've been looking, like... Are you on the hunt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I really, really want, like, a female MC. How do you look for new talent for the label? Um, uh, Mainly, like, YouTube, to be honest, like... And um, obviously when I go to shows and festivals and just keeping my ear to the ground. I have hollered a couple female MCs, but it didn't work out. Right. Um, but yeah, you got to, got to find the right one. Do you know what I mean? We don't yeah. want to just sign someone like, because they're course, all right, yeah, girl. Yeah. They've got to be like levels. But there is some real sick people out there. There's some real sick yeah, people yeah. out there, man. Definitely. Like Little Sims and that as well, man. She's like real talented lyricist as Little well. Sims. Yeah, yeah. I don't think she's available though. No, no, for real. <laughs> That's what I mean, bro. I found quite a few I'm like, yeah, oh, God. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What does the future of High Focus look like? More, just like more releases, consistent releases, like higher levels of promotion. Do you know what I mean? More radio campaigns, like things like that. Just going to comp- continue to take it to the next level and also keep up keep my eye out for like new fresh talent as well because mm-hmm. you got to keep bringing in you know the new generation at the same time absolutely man and yeah talking about all your uh, releases and stuff mm. i want to point out to everybody watching everything behind me right mm. now these are physical copies of high focus releases you can see for in real. exhale album right here on vinyl jeez like yeah man, there's a whole there's catalog a this is this is very very impressive man so as soon as it's there right yeah. next to me let's talk about it in yeah, why yeah, is it man. called in the new album um yeah obviously it's like related to breathing do you know what i mean like the first track's called inhale the last one's called exhale and there's an outro called beyond breath i guess i kind of see it as like a cycle do you know what i mean like and me with my music i've been doing it for quite a while but like on this one there's a bit of a different soundscape to it mm. as well so i'm like my, the album before it was really traditional whereas this one I'm experimenting with new sounds yeah. as well at the same time um, and yeah it's just kind of related to breathing and getting stuff off your chest and that do you know what I mean so yeah, like, there's a few different multi-layer meanings the album is split up into three producers the first uh, part is Chemo then it's uh, Molotov then Joe Caulfield and um, apart from like the last two songs which are produced by Kimo again it just kind of goes in their own chunks so it kind of yeah. progresses through the sounds and the styles and um, yeah for me because I've always been into albums it's really important to me like the journey they're always like a journey do you know what I mean that's kind of why with the titles as well with the tracks it's Inhale, Exhale and yeah. like, I like to take the listener on a journey like through the sound so it's important f- for it to be listened to as a whole as well I think to appreciate it Online, the fans are saying this might be your best album yet. Yeah, yeah. Is that how you feel? Yeah, yeah. Art, it's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. It's your favorite. Yeah, yeah. Did you have any expectations before dropping the album, like leading up to release date? Mm. Was it like, all right, we've got a hit, such yeah, and yeah, such? Yeah. Like, what expectations did you have? Because there's a different sort of. There's basically. I've always been into like double time, you know, spitting mm. like. I kind of see myself as an MC, you know, if I'm in a club, I'm in a rave, having a good time, I like to grab the mic, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. want to be prepared for any type of beat, either hip-hop, drum and bass, whatever. So, like, that style's always been part of me. And then on, like, all my previous albums, I would just have, like, one or two double-time tracks sort of thing, whereas on this one, there's probably, like, eight or nine, and there's more different styles. So I was just kind of, like, intrigued to see how my fans would take it, do you know what I mean? Because mm. it's, like, a change of, so like, change of sound or whatever, but... Everyone took it real well, which was like sonically, it's amazing, mm. man. Like it's and it's not the kind of. I think traditionally, if you if you think about UK hip hop album, it would mm. be that very like boom bap style all yeah, the way yeah. through, yeah. and lyrical content would kind of be all focused really around like similar stuff yeah, from yeah, track yeah. to track. Mm. The melodies might change, the beat might change a bit, but with with this one. Mm. Like sonically, it's just yeah, it's incredible. Even yeah. like there's like a grime record on there. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Like it's it's amazing, man. It yeah. really is. No respect. The album, the campaign. Mm. 
I noticed this album a lot more than the others. Yeah, yeah. It was almost to me, it felt like you, as the label, mm. were trying to reach out a lot more to newer platforms and artists that don't necessarily fuck with you just yet. Yeah, yeah, for real. As opposed to just be like, here's the project, let's mark it mm. out to everyone in our network yeah, and our yeah. current fans. Mm. It was like, no, let's really reach out a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Was there a lot more thought behind the, the, the PR campaign for this this time around? Yeah, definitely, like, more than my previous uh, albums, for sure. And I think, you know, you're right about that. Like, all the people that I collaborated with, pretty much most of them on the record, I'd never worked with before. Right. You know, like, Coops, I hadn't done the track with him before. Capo Lee and Jams as well. Like, I'm I'm really into Grime as well. I'm big fans mm -hmm. of them guys. I see them as, like, you know, two of the sickest in the new generation, like, personally. So it was great to, like, hook up with them. Another rapper, uh, Dat Kid from Bristol as well. And um, got a singer comedy on the hook and Skinny Man as well. Where zoop, zoop. did you find Skinny Man? Like, <laughs> bruv, where did you yeah, find yeah, yeah. him? Bruv, yeah. How did you find him? Yeah, like, let's talk about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, bruv, yeah, he's a legend. Like, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I've been like, I've been listening to him since I was like 16. Like, he's always one of my favourites. Like, he's such a character as well. I think Council with State of Mind yeah. is up there. It has to be up there mm. in like top three most important UK hip hop albums ever. Yeah, hundred percent. Skinny Man gets like, you know, a few occasional bookings. So like, we just met each other and catching jokes. Like I booked him for a few high focus shows and like, yeah, he just shows a lot of love and just supports what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I got sent the beat from Joe Caulfield. I was just like, this is a banger. I actually wrote two verses for that track. And then I was like, I just could hear Skinny Man on it. So I took my yes. second verse off. And I was hit him up on WhatsApp. I was like, yo, G, you got this sick beat. Like, see if you're on it, send it to him. He was just like, I'm loving it. Like, he's like, when do you need the bar by? Like, told him like a few weeks. And then he actually hit me up. He's like, yo, don't I need to be going to studio? Like, I got this bar or whatever. Yes. I was like, yeah. So then, yeah, just got a studio um, in Manor House, like with my boy Pete Cannon. Went down, linked in there. And yeah, like, he come down and ended up finishing writing the rest of the bar there. And then, yeah, laced the track and... Recorded together. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, bro. That's like, that's, that's, for mm. me, that's such an important thing with yeah, music yeah. as well. Like, it's cool when you hear like artists, yeah, mm. I sent them that and they sent yeah. it back, but it's more... It's a moment, you know, bro. Like, it's yeah, a moment definitely. I had, to, you know, I've been listening to him for so long. To go into a studio with artists that you rate and respect and see them, how they do their process, how they record and everything is like, it's an important thing, man. That's like the real moment of it. So like... 100%. It's important. 100%. Now you mentioned Task Force, you mm. mentioned Jess, you, mentioned, you talked about Kalashnikov, who mm. personally is... is one of my favourite UK rappers, yeah. Skinny Man. Do you think these guys have a place in UK hip hop now? Yeah, I think still. I I definitely think they do. Do you know what I mean? They could, um, you know, it's just coming with the releases, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As well, like they've done such legendary stuff. You know what I mean? Like the sagas from Kashnikov, stuff like that. Again, it's like another classic. Just falling down. So like, you know, they made their mark, and then I guess it's just about continually staying relevant. But that's what we've all got to do you know you got to yeah, stay yeah. out there you got to put the music in you got to put the grind in to be getting them bookings and keep people listening to you and coming back to your stuff as well just i always feel like in a lot of senses pioneers of genres mm. always kind of just get they put the foundations yeah. in and then everything else gets built on yeah, top of hard, them and then they're just there the definitely. foundations like they never really get yeah yeah the recognitions Does that makes sense definitely. i'd love to i'd love to hear another clash album yeah 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 it'd be sick it's like you know like even before them like all like london posse and like yeah, yeah. those guys they had to build their foundations then it was like low life doing all their bits now it's high focus and then, do you know what i mean mm -hmm. unless we keep going which we're gonna but do you know what i mean there's gonna be people building off of what we've done and having it an easier time as well so mm. you started out in london mm. what made you decide to go down like the uk hip-hop route as opposed to being mm. another grime mc i think it's just because what i was into and like who I was surrounded by, like at that time, like my mate's older brothers are really into like American hip hop and American rap. Right. Yeah. So like that was all the stuff that me and my personal circle of friends at the time were listening to. Mm -hmm. So then like, we just, when we got like a bit drunk on a Friday, whatever, we'd start playing DJ Premier beats and like all yeah, my yeah. boys would just freestyle, like bare of them, do you know what I mean? Even if they didn't write bars, we'd just like ha have freestyle sessions and that. So I think that's kind of what how it began, do you know what I mean? And then like, people from that crew and, and surrounding the crew started making beats and started making actual tracks together. And that's kind of how it grew. And then through that, I met other people who were doing similar stuff. And then that's kind of how we just all moved like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
I think grime and UK hip hop were very like very separate and like I think they're merging more now. I think the lines are kind of blurring. There is times, yeah. Is where they kind of blur, like they have been very separate, but I think the whole scene, I think UK rap in general is just so much stronger than it kind of was. Yeah, I feel like it's, I feel like there's so many different branches in yeah. UK rap. Yeah, yeah. Because there's, you've got people like Mostack and Mist. Yeah, yeah, for Who real. are doing, I, I think they're making incredible music, mm. but they wouldn't necessarily work on a stage in front of like, a high focus fan base, yeah, for example, yeah, yeah. and vice versa. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's so many different sounds, mm. but so much talent there, man. Yeah, it's crazy. How do you decide what gets used? Mm. And I'm talking songs wise yeah. and lyric wise mm. on a flip tricks record as yeah. opposed to like something you might do with the four hours. I mean, with me, like, with my writing, it's kind of mad. Like, certain night, it's write tons of material, they write like 50 tracks for an album and just use like 15 and stuff. like. I, d I release most of what I write, you know, not all of it, but like probably about 85%, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I just spend my time on it, I choose the beats like that I really want and then, you know, craft it like that. So I guess with me, it's only me deciding what's going to go on. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But like in the four hours, we've got a policy, like if not all four of us are feeling the track, it just goes in the bin. Right, okay. Which actually makes it like quite a bit harder, do you know what I mean? If like yeah, three of us yeah. are like, that's a banger, one's like, no, I'm not feeling it. It's like, oh, it's not going on the album then, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so there's like a, there's an archive of four hours stuff yeah, yeah, where yeah, there's quite only 75% <laughs> yeah. success rate, <laughs> yeah, yeah? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Crazy. Have you had times where you've like, maybe been with the other guys and mm. you've sat and written something and you thought, actually, you know what? Yeah, I want to use this on my like. Have yeah, you ever yeah, had a yeah. moment like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> How many? <laughs> There's been a few, like, do you know what I mean? But that's the thing with the hours. It's kind of rare, like, when we do, when we, basically we make all our music together, pretty much. Like, we all live in different parts of the country, mm -hmm. but we always go to Leaf Dog's yard. Like, he plays us the beats. Like, we choose the beats. We decide on the concepts, and we sit there and like write bars. So, like, with this new album, like the third one, it's hopefully going to drop like early next year. Like I went down to Leafs, I stayed there for like a week, just like sleeping at his yard and basically wrote like uh, like 15 tracks or 15 verses when we were there and recorded them all. Like Sick. So like, that's why with the hours when you hear it, it's got that kind of crew chemistry, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Cause yeah, we've all yeah, been yeah. in the room, like writing bars and recording together and stuff, so. Yeah, it must make such a difference mm. actually being in that environment, Yeah, writing with everyone else that's making Definitely. as opposed to just being on your own. Yeah, and it's like, it's more pressure and there's a bit of competition, but then like that brings the best out, yeah. out in you as well. And, like, and it's even more pressure yeah, given yeah. that if one person doesn't like it, it's getting binned as yeah, well, yeah. like, <laughs> mad. Going back to your album, mm. what was the biggest challenge that you faced making the album? To be honest, it was sort of finalizing the mix downs actually was quite a big challenge. Um, just getting it to sound like perfect how you want, you know what I mean? And like, just mad things, just like listening to like the high end frequency in the track or whatever, or is that snare like two decibels too loud? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That little bit just took, took a bit longer than normal like this time. It's one of the most important processes of making music, it's so but important. one of the most mundane yeah, things for real. ever. For real. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but yeah, big up Kimo, like he smashed it in the end. He, he, he engineered the, the whole thing yeah. as well, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we got there and then. You've got to have some next level patience to be yeah, an engineer, yeah. man. I couldn't do it. I, I don't yeah, think I've got yeah. the attention span either. Yeah, yeah. Mad. Yeah, yeah. Have you got a favourite track on the album? Favourite track? Um, it's probably like asking, like, which child is yeah, your favourite? Yeah. Which kid is your favourite <laughs> yeah, kid? Yeah, for like, real. Probably, like, Thriller's got to be one just because of Skinny Man. Such like, a moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a big moment. And um, Couch Band and Inside the Ride as well. All very different mm. tracks as well. Yeah, yeah. But. And funnily enough, three where you've collaborated with people. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Mm. Uh, is there going to be a video for Thriller? Yeah, yeah. It's in the plans. Yeah, yeah. How difficult is Skinny Man in terms of reliability? So far with me, bro, he's been super reliable. You know? Yeah, yeah. He's right, come don't through. let us down, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get get in the video. What's the most important thing you've learned in your time mm. in the music industry? I think it's about not being like you got to move with the times, and you got to be willing to like let go, and you got to be willing to like accept new stuff and like learn about it and get into it and and embrace like all the things that we have and like the people around you as well because like obviously when re record sales were really good like at the start do you know what i mean Just particularly in like low life era mm -hmm. then when the legal downloading come like it fucked it for a lot of people do you know what i mean yeah, everyone yeah. was like ah getting super scared then streaming came 
came out and digital came out and i even remember people being like oh, i'm gonna boycott it don't want to be on spotify people shouldn't be able to listen to you know but you got to embrace that now that's like the biggest thing so i think it's about learning to roll with the times be positive and you know work with all the people around you do you know what i mean and i guess that mentality is the reason that high focus is alive today and, yeah. and as successful as ever yeah, if not more real. so right yeah yeah definitely amazing yeah actually i've got one more question mm. how would a new artist or an unsigned artist get your attention or get the attention of high focus yeah i'd say obviously you know send us demos like i do check out all the demos mm-hmm. um and be persistent as well like persistence is so important setting yourself up here yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah you've got to like even with leaf dog yeah like the producer of the four hours if you check out his producer credits he's worked with pretty much all the like classic um, american greats right. and like he producing beats for them and he did that just by hitting them up on twitter like check my beats check my beats check my beats they might not listen like do you know what i mean he worked with like cool g rap and like proper right, legends yeah, yeah. He, he, I swear he emailed Cool G Rap like 50 times <laughs> and then he wrote back, I'm feeling this beat. And then he put it on like one of his albums and that like, Amazing. so it's like, that's kind of shows you, you know what I mean? And we done, we work with DJ Premier and stuff like from a similar way, like yeah, yeah, yeah. dedication, man, and being persistent. And um, yeah, just you got to go out, do live shows, meet people and just get involved. Great advice, bro. Yeah. Well, it's amazing, man. I'm really mm. enjoying the album. And yeah. more so now that I know it's on vinyl as well. Yeah, yeah Incredible. Make sure you go check it out. In Exhale is the name of the album. It's out on all platforms and physical, non-physical. It's everywhere, man. DJ Double here with Flip Tricks.